There were 74 episodes of Underbosses and three films. And the first film of Underbosses that went out uh, made uh, a million in six weeks. That shows you how big it was, just lining up to see the film. And uh, it's a great thrill, you, you, you come out, <laughs> you walk down the road, you see the cinema there, there's on the buses, on the queues right down the road. It's a great thrill. We sent in the idea of on the buses to the BBC and it was turned down. So we took it to London Weekend Television. Well, we're lucky again. Frank, you were then, was it London Weekend Television? And, and desperately looking for a hit show. They had a disastrous time. Every show they put on, it's a new network, every show they put on, it was a flop. And <laughs> Frank was so relieved to have a show that at least he said it might work a bit. It won't be a complete disaster. And again, it was in 20 minutes. He came down with the contract, it was fine. And we then sat and sat about casting the show, which is a bit daft in a way, because uh, we, we had Reg Varney, who thought might be good. Well, I was playing on the stage, still playing my harmonica at the time, and I worked with Reg Varney in, I don't know, South End or somewhere, and I said to Ronnie, I think he'd be right as the driver, you see. It wasn't difficult for Ronalds, Wolf and Chesney to say, we know who the lead actor's going to be, because they'd worked with Reg Varney in The Rag Trade, which had originally been a very successful series on BBC Comedy. It was one of those things that everyone wanted to watch. And if you watch him, he's not just working in a garment factory, he's doing lots of piano playing and moving around. He's very fast. You could see his, his, his uh, stage roots and his ability to be a good comic performer. Reg was a wonderful actor. And you saw him in his character, jokes and situations. But in reality, he was, he was quite serious and very determined to, shall we say, do a jo good job with his part and everything else. He, he, you know, he, he was a fabulous actor. Reg was um, not the type of person I've met before. He was a variety comic. And uh, as all comics, quite insecure but also very good at working out business, working out what was going to be funny. He was very creative in that way. He had uh, great stage roots, sort of vaudeville almost type, sort of northern style comedy. Um, he was great. That's how he'd been brought up from a very, very young age. Uh, I think he was in his teens. So he'd always been on stage. He'd learnt how to do the pratfalls, how to make people laugh, how to move fast, how to move quickly, and how to deliver a line. Of course, in those days, you know, you could be delivering jokes on stage, some would work, some wouldn't, so you have to be very, very fast in your delivery, so that if one went past, the audience didn't get fed up and you got another one straight through coming afterwards. So he knew how to perform in front of an audience. Oh, Reg was so funny, you know, he was, a, he was an extraordinarily talented fellow as well, because uh, he used to do stand-up comedy act with a t piano, as a, and uh, used to play jazz and blues and all the things like that, and so quick with his fingers, it was all done deftly sort of thing, and all the time he'd be telling Janet funny stories like that, I'd, I'd never seen an act like it, playing with his hands at the back of him like that and telling the audience all the different things, vamping. I was quite a fan of Reg Varney anyway, because I remember him as a child. I was only 18, but younger than that, he was in uh, Valiant Varney's on television and, and The Rag Trade. So when I came to work on Mutiny on the Buses, it was quite a, quite a thrill, because he was one of my favourite characters. And he was very, he was quite a quiet person, but he still got on and did his job and um, delivered all his stuff so well. And um, when Ronnie Wolf and Ronnie Chesney were writing on the buses, they knew that they wanted Reg Varney to play the part of Stan if he was willing to do it. Um, because he'd, he'd be the ideal put up on character. He knew how to play that well. He knew all about family life. Uh, he knew how to act in a family life with mum and uh, rowing with uh, my uh, brother in law. <laughs> you, you, it is a study of character. Reg was a hard done by, he was obviously the principal character, but he was always hard done by, everybody was doing him down. He couldn't find a girlfriend, uh, but got tremendous sympathy from the audience. Wonderful character. There was, there was the buses, mutiny on the buses, and holiday on the buses. In actual fact, because it was fresh, I think I liked the first on the buses, really because everybody was fresh in that. It was 
something uh, new as against uh, uh, and we all put our heart and soul into it and uh, most of it was done uh, in the uh, Elstree studios and a bit of location work outside. Well, Reg actually used to drive the bus in, in bits of the film that we did because he, ac he actually passed a test. He went into a road test to do it. And we were there the day he did it and passed. It was very good. Yes, Reg needed to learn to like, uh, drive the bus and we got him to drive it. A nice man came in and he learned within a week he was fine. And we found that uh, with that capacity we could stick all the props and the lighting and everything on the bus and Reg would drive it to the location and we'd unload the equipment and put on the passengers. To save money, I think, on the film. Uh, no, uh, Reg uh, wanted to do it properly. Really. We wanted to do it properly yeah. anyway, and Royce Gakes would realise it would save a lot of money if you didn't have to have an extra, so we, Reg learned to drive a bus. He couldn't drive a bus uh, commercially. I mean, he couldn't... He had HGV or one of those things. Yes. He could drive the bus, and all the camera crew, everything was put on the bus, so we saved all that transport. Uh, and we were very mobile, it was great. Yes, oh, he was... He was... It was very good of Reg to, to do that, actually, because he was quite, quite clever. In the second film, where we, had, um, we went in a theme park and he had monkeys crawling all over him while he was driving the, the bus. It was uh, excellent. Yeah, I had to learn to drive a bus, and uh, that was a bit scary at times. Uh, but being, uh, when I was in the army, I drove uh, uh, big diamond T lorries. So it, that bike it wasn't, but it was when we put us on the skid pan, he put me on the, they put me on the skid pan, and... Uh, it's it's a, a certain place over Acton, and uh, when you're driving around, they turn the water on, and you have to put your foot on the brake. Well, first of all, there's a uh, an expert behind you on the floor, and you mustn't touch the brake yourself. So don't touch the foot brake, whatever you do. And he said, "Now I want you to put your foot down, and uh, when you turn around like that." And he said, "Oh, come on!" He went around. No, he said, "That's no good." And eventually, he got me up to speed. And as and I was turning around, he pulled his <laughs> and the bus went. <laughs> oh God, I wonder where I was. <laughs> he said, "You got the idea of it." Now he said, "Now let's take it. Let's go for real." <laughs> they had, saw me all the time coming, hanging on the bus like this, going. It was going around like that, and I was supposed to fall off at the end. And the director said, "We can't let you fall off, Stephen. You know, it's too dangerous because it's still moving." And I, we did it, and I was home. Says it's only going about four miles an hour. So what they did was, in, in fact, they got a rope and fixed it round me so it couldn't be seen, and tied to the stairs of the bus. And what it was, I fell sideways like that off it, but that much from the ground, because it stopped. The rope stopped me like that, like that. And then the stunt man had to do the last little bit, hit the ground himself, and uh, he got a clap. So dangerous stuff, you know. Yeah. So Meet Me on the Buses, which is the one I worked on, um, they commissioned a script almost straight away after because on the buses were so successful, made so much money. So the two Ronnies went into it and created a script, um, which I think is quite quite funny. It's got a lot going going on. And um, again it's quite a thrill for me seeing the seeing the cast, meeting them all. And um, particularly as I had a chance to go out on location just a couple of times. One of my last jobs was going out location to pick up shots and, and various shots around Windsor Safari Park on the buses moving around and getting out of control because the chimpanzees had got back in, <laughs> got inside and grabbed the steering wheel from Reg. So these were all establishing shots, careering here, there and everywhere and going around the front of it, in front of the actual Windsor Safari Park. I'm in the bus driving and the lion has to come down the bus, down the stairs. Now the keeper of the lion, you see, is the handler. He got him up the stairs and he wasn't keen on that at all. And now he's got to get him to come down. And as he's, he comes down the stairs and he's naughty and he's claws the keeper. And the keeper starts clouting him and then he and I'm in this, and I'm trapped, I've got this little door. I thought, God almighty, what's happening here? I didn't know what to do. And they said, they said to the cameraman, keep, keep it rolling, keep it rolling, keep it rolling. And my face was like, and I wasn't acting, I could see this. I said, jeez whiz. I thought, God, so after, you've got what you want, I'm jumping.
I remember a little sequence where the inspection pit was filled with foam as a fire, which Rich had to put out, and he used foam, and the pit was full of foam, and Reg has to fall in the foam. We had a stunt man to do the stunts, actually. Then we lifted Reg in, and Reg crawled out. They put, they put the foam in it, you see, and of course we're all falling into the foam. But what you, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's this illusion. You see this foam there, and you just go on falling. And I, I put my shoulder out, because this foam, <laughs> it's nothing, is it? You, all you're doing is just falling, bang, and you're throwing yourself into this foam. And we were all coming out with, yeah, God, blimey, Bob's <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So Me on the Buses did well. It did well at the cinema. Not as well as on the buses, but enough for the producers to say there is still money in this. Um, let's give it another shot. And they did a deal with Pontins that they could go and film uh, at Pimprostatin. And so the plot was very much about the fact that Stan and Jack had lost their jobs at the, at the bus depot. And what they didn't realise was that Blake had lost his. And through a bit of machinations and script, they all found themselves uh, uh, at a holiday camp. Well, because you had all the people, that was the trouble. That was, you're trying to work. And when you tell people, look, I'm sorry, I'm working, they, they don't understand that expression. <laughs> I said, no, I said, it, uh, I said what, what, you call that work? I said, I said, well, for us, it's, it's working, you know. Quite extraordinary, because they're coming up and asking for autographs in between and things like that, and sort of talking about you while you're doing a scene. Oh, yeah, she's fatter than I thought, or she's thinner than I thought, you know what I mean? Oh, he's not as big. And it's, it's, it's you become sort of, you get tunnel vision. You just have to do it. The last shot of the day, where they got this kid's uh, paddling pool in there, and uh, I had to go in there, and uh, Blakey was supposed to chase after me. And uh, he said, that's it, that'll do, Rich, right there. And so I stayed there. I'd hear Blakey splashing about and coming along. No, I didn't hear anything, and I thought, uh, where the hell's he got to then, you know? And I was there uh, 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, nothing happened. I turned around, I was on my own. They'd all packed up, <laughs> pulled the plug and everything. And when I got back, I was all having a drink at the bar, screaming their heads off. And I'll go to bring him wet. By the time the third on the buses film came out, Reg Varney had left on the buses. He actually left it before it finished. He left, I think, in the penultimate series. So there was a whole series of on the buses with, actually without him. And then Michael Robbins, who played Arthur, also left. But the humour, it started to wane. They'd really milked as much as they could. As I've said, 74 episodes uh, and three films. There was very little more they could get out of it. And so they decided to hedge their bets and say, OK, the trilogy was enough. No more films. They'd like to have done more, but they just couldn't take the risk. Wouldn't they? It was the two boys that said, we're written out, Reg, we can't do it. I said, well, neither am I. If you're, I wasn't trying to... I, I'd built such a reputation that to go in with somebody... See, other people come in, would write it as a team show. Now, ours was different. It was written for me, with all the people working around me. That's a great deal of difference. You see the other shows which uh, Sid James were in. Now, they were team shows, but On The Buses was uh, not a one-man show, I don't mean, but it wasn't as such a, as a team. Right? It was all based around what I was doing. There's a different attitude as well to it. I didn't know it was going to be as big as that, no. It was enormous, enormous queues, uh, but they all went well. That they, never, they, they took a lot of money, but not as much as that first one that went out, was the whew, walloper. Uh, um, but the first one we, we knocked off uh, in four weeks, and I don't think I was working till nine o'clock every night. And I used to say, oh, mate, mind Roy Skeggs, of course, I can't take this, Roy. Uh, 
And he said, well, it'd be worth it, mate. You say, take it from me when it's finished. Um, nice bloke, Roy. I'm proud of everything I've ever done. That happened to be the most famous because it's the, it was the most... Uh, if we'd have only done half a dozen, perhaps, of them, they wouldn't have taken off so much. It was the on and on and on, which, which, uh, uh, which did the trick. They, they all say that you've got to do at least six before they take off. That's even in everything, like rag tray, same thing, and that became enormously big. It didn't come as big as uh, buses. The buses were stronger, uh, uh, in as much that it was, it was the, uh, it was the bus, it was the uniforms. We were dealing with the public, and uh, it was unusual. That was the thing about it. We believed, every one of us believed in what we were doing. We never mugged anything. It, we acted it as you would a straight play, really. So you don't have to uh, time funny lines because it's already there, situation. And that was the lovely bit about it. It came over, came over so real.